Well, I wanted to find a different angle on the Russian Revolution because obviously there's a huge amount of Russian testimony of what happened in 1917 and a lot of it, of course, that was produced in the Soviet era has been massaged by the Soviet historiographers. So it's been edited to suit a particular political agenda. And I wanted to find a less biased opinions, perhaps, of events by people who are not directly involved in it. So I'd been aware there were a lot of foreign nationals in the city because of the war, because so there were a lot of diplomats and military attaches and people coming and going. And I knew also there had been considerable British colony in the city since, well, really the end of the 18th century. So I began years and years ago, about 15, 20 years ago, collecting them as kind of a hobby looking for foreign eyewitnesses, and I picked up quite a few Americans as well. But there were French, there were Scandinavians, there were all kinds of people based in the city who left accounts, letters, diaries, some published, but most of them not. And I suddenly realized that they had a, a lot of very interesting things to say about the re revolution from a different kind of point of view and also because they weren't writing to a political agenda. So, for example, the wife of a diplomat writing a letter home to mother is not going to harangue her mother about the politics. She's going to tell her about the food shortages, about how difficult it is to get sugar or flour. So, uh, in many ways, they were much more spontaneous and uh, accounts and not loaded at all with a political slant. Those who managed to get out of the Russian aristocracy, you know, they fled all over the world. A lot went to France, a lot went to America, a few ended up in London. Most of them fled in just pretty much what they stood up in. They lost everything. They lost their great palaces, they lost all their furniture. Some of the women um, managed to get out with their jewels sewn into their clothes. But most of them really were quite impoverished. And so when they arrived, say, in London, they were living in absolute penury and relying on the charity of other emigre Russians. So there was, there became a kind of network in exile and they all kind of looked after each other, but most of them did lose everything. What's so interesting is many of the foreigners actually greeted the February Revolution. They felt change was long overdue, like an awful lot of other people in the city. It was just a matter of not if it would happen, but when there would be a revolution. And in that sense, they felt there needed to be a real shake-up. They felt that the old Tsar system was, you know, moribund and needed reform. And so they were filled with hope, like many of the Russians were when it first happened. But what you see as you follow their diaries and letters through that year is a growing sense of disenchantment, of the inability for the of the provisional government to really get a grip on the situation and bring in a stable government. And then the horror, of course, after the Bolsheviks take over, that in fact what's happening is the imposition of a, a, a regime as draconian as the one they've just got rid of. One of the great things about doing this book for me as a historian is that it, it's a book where research played an enormous part. A lot of these people, when I started the project, I didn't even know about. I knew a few of them. And it was a bit of a punt, a gamble, that once I start ser started searching, would I find enough people? And so the joy of discovering all these forgotten voices, people most historians have never heard of, and that's a great thing. It's pushing the envelope, it's bringing back a little bit more of lost history and, and giving a voice to people who actually saw the most extraordinary momentous events going on.